Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so if we don't hear the word of God, faith don't come. But the more we hear about the word of God, faith comes. Faith grows. And so we need our faith our tailor to receive all that he has done for us. Now when we talk about the Holy Spirit, first of all, let me tell you something. This may be a little bit hard for you to receive it, but that's okay. You pray about it, the Holy Spirit will show you. When God made Adam, you'll find this in chapter 1 of Genesis, you'll find it in chapter 2. First, he created his body. And there was no life in that body. That body was just, you know, dead. No life. And God grabbed that body. Now remember, he said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. He took that body, first of all. We know that that body came from the dust of the ground. He took that body and breathed the breath of life in that body. In other words, he didn't blow his breath on it. He spoke the word. He spoke it. See, everything God created was done by words. He spoke it. He said, light be, and there was light. And he kept on going. Whatever he said, let it be, let it be, let it be, it became by words. And so he spoke life. He, he grabbed Adam. He, Adam must have been the same size as him. He grabbed him. And he spoke the word to his nostril. Those words went in, which is the spirit, spoke life into that body. In other words, his very own life went into Adam. Adam had so much power in him that he gave him power to dominate the entire earth. Can you imagine if 6,000 years has gone by? Can you imagine if nobody died, not one death occurred in 6,000 years? How many people we would have here? And how big the earth would have been? See, Adam was supposed to speak the word just like God spoke the word. Yeah. Adam was to dominate the whole earth, was to populate, was to increase. Yeah. But he didn't do that. He had the power in him to do it. God gave him the right, God gave him the power to just speak things into being. All right? Now, what happened? He gave that power to our enemy, Satan, when he decided that he was going to get himself a hook from God and then hook himself to Satan by obeying Satan. He could not dominate the earth any longer. But you know what? Where did all sickness and all disease and all poverty and all lack and all confusion came from? It came from Adam. He had the power. That power had been changed now 
And Satan used that power yeah. that was in him. See, Satan has no power. Absolutely not. Right. Unless we give him the power. Right. And so all these problems came from Adam. Why? Because he disobeyed. But now, Jesus came. And Jesus has the power. Amen. Amen. He took every bit yeah. of the power. He's redeemed you and I from the curse that was on this earth. You and I have been redeemed or delivered from the curse of the law. Now, the power is back into you and I. We have the power now to speak. That's why our words are important. The Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue. We have to watch our words, folks. Because we become what we speak. I know, before I even became born again, I knew that there's something different about words, certain people. My mom was, before she became a Christian, spoke a lot of words that I didn't like it at that time. I didn't know anything about it. But you know what? What she said came to pass, exactly. Just the way she said it. And so our words, because why? We have the power now. We have the power. He's filled us with his Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is inside of us now. So we got the Holy Spirit inside of us. The third person of the Godhead lives inside of you. Not only the third person of the Godhead, but the second person, the Son, lives inside of you. Not only the second person, the first person, God the Father, lives inside of you. Amen. So we got the Father, we got the Son, we got the Holy Spirit living inside of us. Hmm? Yeah. But the problem is, we're not acknowledging him. We're not acknowledging them. See? We have to become aware, aware of their presence inside of us. That they are with us, and that they'll never leave us nor forsake us. I don't care how you feel. Your mind has nothing to do with it. It's what's inside of you and of what he said you are. That's who you are. Amen. Amen. Don't let your mind run off. The spirit in you is the real you. This body here is just a vehicle for you to get around. Just like you got in your car and drove it here, well, this body takes you around, but it's not the real you. The real you is inside here, right. see? And so that's how we contact God. That's how we stay with him. If you would please turn to John. I got so many scriptures here. Let me see which one I want to give you. John 16. 
the 16th chapter of John. Jesus is talking. And he's using the word of wisdom. In the 16th chapter of the Gospel of John. Verse 7. We're talking about the Holy Spirit, the great and mighty one that abides in you and I. In the 16th chapter, the, the seventh verse, it says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Can you imagine? Gee, it was so great of a prophecy that Jesus has to say, have to say, I'm telling you the truth. This is God that never lied. He's telling the disciples, I'm telling you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. He said, it is more expedient, it is better, it is far better for you that I go away. Yeah. Why? Because if I don't go away, the comforter, the helper, the teacher, the counselor, the advocate, will not come. But if I go, I will send him unto you. Yeah. See, the Holy Spirit knows you. He made you. A teacher is supposed to know their subject. Some do. Some don't even know. Some students more know than some of, know more than some of the teachers these days. Sadly to say. But a teacher is supposed to know their subject. And the Holy Spirit knows you and I. Yes. Amen. He knows our beginning and our end. He made us. He is the best teacher there is. Yes. And he is the best friend you can ever have. <coughs> he will never get angry with you. He will never get disappointed. No. God doesn't get disappointed. You may be disappointed, but he doesn't. God is love completely. Every bit of him is love yes. toward you. The Holy Spirit will never leave you nor forsake you. You may leave, he won't. Yes. He will leave you. No matter where you go, it's going. Now, whether you know it or not, or whether you feel it, that's a different thing. But he is going to be there. Yes. So he says, it is more expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, he will not come. But if I go away, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will guide you, he will teach you, he will strengthen you, he will comfort you, he's your best comfort that there is. Yes. Hmm? I don't care what situation you're in, the Holy Spirit is the greatest comforter because he knows exactly what you need. He knows exactly where you need to be. Amen. He knows exactly 
how to comfort you and how to strengthen you. And then he stands by you 24 hours a day to help you. He's constantly standing there to watch over you. But we're not paying him any mind. Hmm? I use this as an example. Suppose somebody come in, your best, 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 best friend come into your house in your living room and sit there and you did not say one word to that best friend of yours. Day in, day out, day in, day out, your best friend is sitting there and you're not saying nothing. What happened? You're not going to get anything from your best friend. He may have a billion dollars in his hand waiting for you to come and get it. But if you're not paying him no mind, no attention, so the Holy Spirit wants us to be aware of him. See, you can talk to him. You can talk to him. The best thing you can do is talk to the Holy Spirit. 24 hours a day if you can. He's your best friend. He's your best friend. John 14, 26, please. Well, let's, 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 uh, let's go to John uh, uh, 16 first. Let's finish John 16. Verse 13, please. Verse 13. It says, How be it, anyhow, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath a mind. Therefore said I that he shall take a mind and shall show it unto you. The Holy Spirit is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful person. He is not a power. He is not an yet. He's a person just like you and I. He's the one that created you and I. And he is going to be with you to help you and I in everything we need in this earth. The Holy Spirit He'll take from Jesus everything that Jesus had. He'll show it to us. That's what Jesus said. In John 14, 26, he said, But the comforter Again, the teacher, the helper, the strengthener, the counselor, the advocate, the intercessor, and the standby. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. The New Living Translation of that scripture says, But when the Father sends the Advocate as my re representative, that is, the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you.
He will teach you. He will teach you not just something, but all things, all things. But the, great, the, the good thing about it is he will teach you all things that is good for you. Something that some teachers teaches in school or whatever is not good for you. They just have to teach. But the Holy Spirit will teach you all things that is good for you. Amen. All things that is good for you. And then he will bring all things, not something, all things to your remembrance. All things to your remembrance. So we're talking about 2018 being the year of the Holy Spirit. Then we need to become very acquainted with him. And the way we become acquainted with him is reading his word, praying in the Holy Spirit. If you don't, if you're not, if you don't pray in tongues, you're messing up. If you're not praying in tongues or you don't pray in tongues, you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, you're missing out. Because you get built up, you get charged up when you pray in the Holy Spirit. How long, if you don't speak in tongues, how long can you pray to God in English or whatever language? How long can you find things to tell that is good? And he tells you don't repeat over and over and over the same thing. So what can you do? I know before I became a uh, really, really acquainted with speaking in tongues. I, all I did was glory, 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 glory. <laughs> Going around. Glory, 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 glory. How long can you do that? Thank God. When I begin to speak in tongues, It was different. You, you folks got it made. The day you become born again, you got, you got it made. The day you become born again, that day you can, that, that's the next minute or that second you can receive the Holy Spirit and be filled with the Holy Spirit. We didn't know that. We had to go through how many weeks we were, I think it was about three or four or more weeks. For them to teach us how to how to do what? To become baptized or to receive the Holy Spirit? If it was about about three or three or four weeks, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't remember how many weeks. But I know it didn't happen just the same day. But with us though, uh, uh, my wife and I, we we was ahead of them because we got filled with the Holy Spirit in our own house. We didn't know how to how to how you're supposed to speak in tongues. In fact, uh, sometimes the mouth goes that way, and you know. But we just love it. We just love it. In our own table, our own living room table, we got filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues. But still, they wanted us to go into baptism. I think. Or, I, it, 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 yeah, in the church and everything else before we were supposed to receive the Holy Spirit. We didn't tell them that. No, it was obedient. <laughs> but those days you had to go. But today, all you got to do is once you receive Jesus, you receive the, the Holy Spirit will come right, right there and then. 
And speaking in tongues is one of the greatest things that you can't do because it will help you grow and mature in your right standing with God. Amen. And he will show you things to come. Now, I watch some of the news, not all of it, some of it. But the news, for the most part, is things that they show you what already happened, that already took place. But the Holy Spirit will show you things that are to come. What? Sometimes, if you're praying in the Spirit, he wants you to pray for that particular thing so that it will not happen if it's something that's not good. It will not happen that way. But at the same time, he will show you things that are good that are to come in your way. See, you got God. Can you imagine you got God Almighty inside of you? Hmm? He's inside of us. But now, we got to learn to hear Him and talk to Him. He not only knows His subject, but knows and understands you and understand all things. Why? He was the one that made it. He knows how it was made. He knows how it works. He knows exactly when and what we need in our mind. And when we need them, we must by faith submit ourselves to him and trust him to bring those things we need to our remembrance from our spirit to our mind. Amen. The Holy Spirit will guide you. And he is a qualified one. He is qualified to guide you in your entire life. Now, whenever we talk about guide, the Marine Corps coming to my mind there. We was going on this trip in the woods at night time. I tell you, when night comes for me, things seem a little bit different. It it seems like <laughs> just the other day. I go to Hannaford all the time. For some reason, I, I, we, we went a little different way, and I came on the street of Hannaford, right there, right next to Hannaford. Instead of me going to the right, I'm going to the left. And my wife says, hey, we're supposed to be going that way. Well, to me, I, to me, we're going the wrong way, that way. And uh, so my Drill instructor, who was, who was not a drill instructor, but my sergeant, it was at night time, he says, uh, Corporal, you be the guy. I said, yes, sir. It was at night time. So, we get ready to, to go. 
I'm the guy now. I'm going in front. And so, instead of going to the right, I'm going to the left. Sergeant says, who are you doing? Sir? You're going the wrong way. Go this way. So I went that way. Before you know, I'm taking the wrong turn again. He's over there at my back. I mean, by the time, by the time uh, 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 we got where we're supposed to go, he was so angry because he didn't have no guidance. He was, he was the one who was actually guiding me. And uh, so to have, a, to have a, a guy that's not qualified is not good. But I tell you what, the Holy Spirit is the best guide there is. Amen. He created all things, he knows all things, he knows every house, every street, he knows every minute, every second of your life, he knows everything that you need, everything about you, he's the best guy you can have. Amen. He's the best, 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 best friend. If we Recognize that in our lives. He not only knows where, when, and how things were made, but he knows more than we know ourselves. He knows what's better than we know ourselves. <clears throat> and he knows exactly how he can guide us. He will show us things to come. He will show us things from Jesus. He will show us things from the Father. The Holy Spirit is here to represent heaven completely in this earth, in our body. He is able to show us future things by the word of wisdom or things that is taking place with someone or something which is the word of knowledge. Things of Jesus, what he has done and what he is doing and how we can walk in it so as to bring glory to God. Things the Father has given <coughs> him as to bring glory to the Father. The Holy Spirit is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful person. We don't see him with our physical eye. And we haven't seen any picture of him like we saw some pictures of Jesus. Even those pictures that you see is far from what how Jesus really looked. In order for you to get a true picture of Jesus, you have to go in the Bible to see how Jesus really looked. But anyway, he will reveal things to us. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians 3.16 because you are, you and I are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You are his temple. It says, know ye not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you. You are not just anybody. Satan may tell you you ain't no good. 
You ain't this, you're that, you ah, 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 ah. You are the temple of God Almighty. Amen. He dwells in you. He lives inside you for eternity. You are the temple of God. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. It says, What? Know me not that your body, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. This body here doesn't belong to you no more. It belongs to God Almighty. He bought us with the precious price of the blood of his son. Amen. You've been bought and paid for. Your body belongs to God. Hallelujah. How you act, how you treat it, all those things should be taken in account how we are to be. Second Corinthians 6.16 It says, And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. And God had said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Yeah. Amen. Don't you think Satan hates that? Don't you think he gets so angry, so hateful, yeah. when he reads those things? his side. It takes all kinds of, kind of work, all kinds of stuff to get people not to be on his side. And one of us coming that even a minute or so get that person born again and he's gone. He took all those years to train that, that person and you come in one minute, boom, he's gone. He's lost. Huh? Don't you think he gets angry about that? Yes, he does. He does. Every spirit-filled believer has within him all the power he will ever need <coughs> to put him over Amen. in this life. Amen. Everyone. <coughs> You have the power. And we can see in the New Testament three relations that God sustained toward us, toward men. <clears throat> Excuse me. Number one, God is for us. <clears throat> Number two, God is in us. Yeah. Number three, God is with us. So is he is for us, he is in us, and he is with us. Yeah. You got him in you. Yeah. <clears throat> you got him. What 
To have God living inside of you who can be against you? If God is for us, who can be against us? Satan? Satan? He's lost. He knows that. He knows that. How many years did he work for trying to keep you in his domain? And here you are, away from him, yeah. another person in domain, which is God Almighty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm? I'm telling you. And then to make things work, he's under your feet. Every time you speak the word of God, every time he comes around trying to tempt you, trying to make you feel that you're no good, then all of a sudden you got, you got the word of God inside of you, and you bring it out. He hears that. Your feet goes on top of his head. Hmm? He's walking, he's been walking over every day. Somebody's walking over his head. Hmm? You've got the great and mighty one inside of us. It doesn't matter. No matter how difficult the situation may be, no matter how dark the clouds may hang upon the horizon of our life, we are commonly assured that we must win. There can be no defeat if the Lord is for us and he is for us. Thank you, Lord. In this box. No matter what the circumstances may be, our Lord is with us. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I'm telling you. <coughs> we have the greatest covenant or agreement during In the Old Testament they had a covenant. And God protected them. Are you let me ask you something. This is true. King David was a king. He loved God. He didn't have the Holy Spirit inside of him. The Holy Spirit was upon him and with him. He wasn't born again yet. So naturally, the Holy Spirit couldn't come and live inside of him. But you and I are born again, so the Holy Spirit is living inside of us. But doesn't mean that God didn't love King David. King David was loved by God so much because he was quickly to repent. He was one person that knew how to repent. He, first of all, he stole somebody else's wife. And then, commit adultery. 
and then killed an innocent people, an innocent, an innocent man. Did you do that? Do we have anybody here that killed somebody? <laughs> anybody that stole somebody else's husband or wife? No. But yet, God said, I have found David, a man after my own heart. Why? Because he was, he repented quickly. So, if God was willing to love David that much, how much more? Hallelujah. Thank you. Does he love you and I? He loves David just like you and I, but David is up in heaven, but we're here, so we're talking about you and I now. Always remember that God loves you, that you are valuable, precious, there's no, no price, no word that can describe how much God loves you. to fill you with himself. He could have, have filled you with an angel. What? Yes. A possessed person is filled with a what? Demon. Angel. If a person could be filled with the demons, then they could be filled with the angel. Good angel. He could have. He could have had us filled with the, with the angel, but you know what? He didn't trust nobody. You and I are his children. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He wants to fill us with himself. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. See? Thank you. We have A wonderful, wonderful God. So we need to be conscious of God's presence in our body at all times. This is why in Mark 9.23, the Bible says, all things are possible to him that believeth. All things are possible to him that believes. See? All things. Why? Because you got God inside of you. Thank you, Lord. All things is possible to God. And so if God is inside of you, then all things are possible to us. Can you believe? The reason all things are possible is because our God planned, our God planned that believers should have God himself living in him through the power of the Holy Spirit. First John 4.4 4 tells us that the greater one lives inside of us. It says, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them, which is the devil, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Hmm? We got 
that and take this new birth seriously. Yeah. Amen. Seriously. You are born again. You have no the devil may tell you, oh, remember you were no good, you're this, you're that, you're this, you're that, your past is no good. No. You don't have no more past. Right. Right. Jesus took your past, my past. Hallelujah. You don't have it no more. With your mind, when the devil tried to tell you, you did this, you did that, you did this, you did that. No, 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 no. I don't have no past. Jesus took our past. Now, he has a past. And you may want to remind him. Tell him where he's going to. He leave you alone. The Holy Spirit, folks, is yours. He is so loving. So kind, so wonderful that he wants to please you. He wants to help you. He wants to do things for you that you can even imagine. But we got to acknowledge him. We got to put him first. Yeah. 2018 is our year. Let's make up our hearts and mind and our entire being that nothing will stop us from putting God first. You know, Satan will give you all kinds of stuff if you agree with him. He'll make it like it's really real. But remember, he is a liar. He never tells one truth. Not one. He is the father of lies. He don't know how to tell the truth. There's no truth in him. You got the truth in you, yes. the Holy yes. Spirit. Because he says he's show you the truth. Show you all things that is to come. What a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful future we have. Yes. 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 Because of the great and mighty one. Thank you, Father. I can't. That's why the Apostle Paul in the book of Rome, Romans, the 12th chapter, he said, I beseech you or I beg you, Romans 12.1, I beseech you or I beg you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Our body are to be presented to God. And I encourage you to do that on a daily basis. 
I'll get up, Lord. I thank you that this is the day that you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, I thank you that I am your son and you are my heavenly father. I now present this body to you, Lord, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto you, Lord, which is my spiritual worship. Lord, I will not be conformed to this world, but I'll be transformed by the renewing of my mind. Thank you, Lord. So use me, Lord, Amen. to say what you want me to say, to do what you want me to do, to go where you want me to go. And I thank you that I am your child. Amen. Go Amen. on your way. Your day is established. We have to put him first. Don't compromise. You can't change nothing in the spiritual realm. Nothing. God is the one that has the power to do it. A lot of these things that come, Satan will tell you, oh, why don't you do something about that? Why don't you do this? You can. Anything, he, anything he tells you, don't agree with it. He speaks to your mind, not your spirit. You speak to your mind. That's why it's important for you to spend time on the Word of God every day, every day, every day, every day. Read your Word. Read the Bible. Why? Because you're going to find the will of God for your life in his word. The Holy Spirit is your best, best, best friend. Receive him every moment of your life and you will see your life will be like God intended to be. Praise the Lord. Praise God. All right? Let me ask you this question. How many of you know that you know that you know that you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Raise your hand. No one looking around. Raise your hand. You know that you know that you know you feel with the Holy Spirit. And how many of you speak in tongues? Okay. All right. Those of you that don't speak in tongues, you need to use yourself to the Holy Spirit to speak in tongues. Why? Because when you speak in tongues, you're not speaking to man. You're not speaking to yourself. You're speaking directly to heaven. Amen. You're speaking directly to God himself. You're speaking the mysteries that's inside of your heart. His mysteries that he's placed inside of you, in your heart. And so if you don't speak in tongues, and you want to be able to do that, and I recommend you do, I'm going to ask uh, 
Miss Joan, at the end, you can see Miss Joan, she's over here. Raise your hand, Miss Joan. And she will lead you to receive the gift of charm. So don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. This is God's way of having you becoming more and more knowledgeable of who you are and who He is in your life. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you.